The second scripture reading comes from Luke 1, 39 to 55. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a, to a Judean town in the hill country where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leapt for joy. And blessed, and blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the mighty one has done great things for me, and, his holy, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him, and from generation to generation he has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. This Advent, we have been looking at what it means to understand the direction of our salvation, what it means to wait and to remember Christ's coming that happened thousands of years ago as we also wait and prepare for Christ's second coming that will come at a time where only God knows. And this first week we looked at what it meant to understand the end goal of our story, not of us going away to be in heaven for eternal life, but awaiting for God's kingdom to come to earth, for God's will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. And what it means to celebrate that direction, that God comes to us both as a baby and Jesus and in the second coming to set everything in the fullness of God's shalom, of peace, and of justice, of loving kindness and righteousness. And what happens in the in-between, right? Because God has already come, but God is still coming. And so there is an already of Christ's resurrection and life in the midst of death that we celebrate every Sunday. But there's also a not yet because we're still awaiting Christ's second coming. We're still awaiting for God to wipe away every tear from our eyes for mourning and crying and tears to be no more. For God to be living in the fullness of heaven on earth here present with us. And so we've done some really heavy theological and ethical lifting and looking at what it means to die before Christ's return and what it means to live before Christ's return and how to give God all of who we are in figuring out how to best follow Christ, how to best be signs of that already in the midst of the not yet. And it's going to be a messy, murky road that we have. And there are going to be times when we disagree and can't figure things out. There are going to be times where we are in the right place at the right time for the right reason. And we have that kingdom already moment that shines in the joy and in the excitement that only those moments and that fullness can bring. There's also going to be deep brokenness when we very much experience the powers of evil, and the spiritual forces of wickedness at work. And there's going to be hard pain. But in all of this, when we die as those who go forth to live, when we live as those prepared to die, in all of this, in all living and in all dying, we celebrate one for whom that neither life or death that neither angels or rulers, that neither the present or things to come, that no power, no height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. 
And so although love is not always a light thing, and what love asks us to do is not always an easy thing, today we celebrate all that love makes possible, all that love transforms and heals, all that love brings about. And I promised Donna that I would keep it lighter today because we've been really heavy and into it this Advent season. And so I want to walk through the story of Mary and Elizabeth looking at what it might mean for us to give gifts this season that point to and mirror and reflect the love in which God has given us Jesus. Now, for all of those who are done with their Christmas shopping and Santa is ready to go, simply go through this season with that as a lens. Look at the gifts you have given and the gifts you have received, and look at which ones bring that moment of a love that points you to an even greater and deeper love. And keep an eye on those moments that, mm, not so much. And think of then how to practice this season and be present in it next year. And for those of you who are ticking the time to I'm done so you can get out to the shopping, maybe this is an extra idea to think about as you're going through it. Um, and I'm also going to be asking for interaction and participation. So if you have an idea of how you all and family-wise already do that, I'm going to want to hear it. And when I ask questions, they're not going to be rhetorical this sermon round. I'm going to actually want any ideas or things that you have. So fair warning, everybody on the same page? Okay, here we go. All right, Barry, if you would bring us back to uh, the scripture. We're coming to Kiva in a second. And so Mary comes, right? So we have this teenager who's stuck in an occupied, back to the very beginning, Barry, if you don't mind, in an occupied country to an angel who comes to and is like, hey, how's it going? So an angel appears to you. And your first response is, oh. <laughs> yeah, there's going to be some fear, right? Like this is a very different, non-normal, uh, daily routine kind of thing. So what are gifts that we can give? Greetings, favored one. Perplexed, okay, fearful, yes. What is going on? What are gifts that we can give? that echo God's do not be afraid, that speak peace into our fear. Do not be afraid is the most repeated phrase of scripture. What are gifts that we can give that will help assuage, this is the question, that will help assuage the fears of those we love? What gifts could help? Listening, a hug, Presence, like what kind of presence? Oh, presence, being present. <laughs> what kind of gifts, what kind of presence could help us wage fear? A nightlight, prayer, blanket, anybody up for a puppy? Others? Okay, think of adult world. What about car maintenance gift certificates? Or a really good mechanic. <laughs> or a blue apron. Anybody afraid of getting the meals together? And even if you have the resources to get the meals, actually finding the time to put them together and be able to eat healthy? Anything else? Chocolate chip pancakes. Chocolate chip pancakes and this is why I love you, Molly. <laughs> right there. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Say again. Oh, spa package. Now we're talking. We need to be friends. Yes, yes. Oh, right on, Ruby. Yes. Ways to build space into our lives. That leads us absolutely perfectly into the next one. So these are ways that we can give gifts that help overcome the fear that is present in our world. And there's some really legitimate things to be afraid of. But then we come to Elizabeth. And Elizabeth offers Mary safe harbor in a society that does not understand what's happening to her and doesn't give room for something amazing or beautiful to be happening, 
foot would rather judge this in an honor-shame society as something that there would be no honor in but all shame. So where do we need to be the Elizabeths that give the gift of safe space, that risk our own honor in order to be present with somebody else? What do those gifts look like? Or just think safe space. What does safe space look like? Supporting the homeless. I'm just going to call out that, you know, Holy Spirit is at work here, and we have a colleague of mine, Reverend Mark Smiley, in the house celebrating, worshiping with us, who also happens to be a spiritual counselor. And so what does it mean to make those connections and to find that kind of counsel and guidance and space for that in, in our season? Holding someone's hand. Holding someone's hand. A night of babysitting, anyone? So you can actually have the space to think through. <laughs> Melissa's ready for it. All right. Anybody who needs to get Melissa a present, you've got the idea. All right. And spa would work well for here, too. But think of gifts that offer safe space. Did you have one, Bill? Making room at your table for others. Who can we invite? Noah. Providing shelter. Yep. Showing up with food. Yeah, food does a lot, right? We've got it assuaging fear. We've got it setting safe space. Jesus knew what he was talking about when he asked us to remember him at a table with food. And I'm not just talking about the chocolate chip pancakes, although they're really good. <laughs> right, right. All right, let's keep going. And let's ask a harder question this time. Mary's Magnificat, when she has that moment, right? And thank you both so much for recreating that moment for us right now, right? There's this joy that comes together that erupts when our priorities are reorganized and aligned and we can see where God is working and at work and how we want to be a part of that. I'm pairing that moment with a conversation that I overheard this week of, I have no idea what to get my husband. We're fine. Whenever he needs anything, he goes and get it. It's not like there's anything that we need. I have no idea what to get him. And going through the, well, what am I going to get him? We have to find something. So why don't, when we get to that point, why don't we change the question? Why don't we change the conversation? Because Mary's Magnificat is about there being justice so that those, think back to the manna gathering, those who have two, no, those who have large tribes gather enough for them, but never too much. And those who have small tribes, I am totally switch that. This is what happens when you switch scriptures in your head. All right. But the point is that nobody had too much and nobody had too little and everybody had enough. And so what happens if we don't wait for Jesus to return and make that happen for us or to us? What happens if we, of our own will, of our own joyful will, make that decision ourselves? I've got enough. I'm set. Where in the world around me is someone that doesn't have that? And so what does it look like when we throw parties and everybody's scrambling to find yet something else? We do an ornament exchange instead, so everybody gets something new, but we're just using what we already have instead of adding more onto it. What if every new toy that our kids get, we practice Jan's practice of then giving something away that we already have? And we've got the thrifty penny right here. And then you could give a thrifty penny gift to the thrifty penny ears and show up and help them sort all the extra stuff and work we're giving them so it's not on them and we can volunteer with them. What does that look for adult toys when I get my, hopefully, Abraham, if you're listening, my multi-cooker for Christmas? And then what do I need to give up in return if that hopefully comes to the house? <laughs> do you all have practices for this at home with your families? I know of another family who... Um, 
does a budget, and as much as they spend on their family for Christmas, they also spend on another family in the community. There are ways to keep this in mind. And there are ways to keep this in mind while we are giving gifts to each other. Um, we've got the bazaar every year here. Um, it's something, every single item is handcrafted by people from the church and goes to support the church ministries. Um, as we're, so these are the gifts, right, that give love not only to those who are receiving them, but to those who made them and the earth that produced them as well. So Barry, there's lots of different ways we can do this. And if you have other things that you love, shout out. This is Kiva. Um, so it's a micro lending organization. And you can go on their website and all together find the person um, and whatever they want to do in life um, and support them getting the funds to do that. And you can choose what country you want to support, who you want to support. You can look through it all together as a family. And then the best thing is you get to follow that person and what happened. There are reports that are sent in. And so you get to see the difference and what happened. And then as they pay back that loan, you can do it all over again. And oh my gosh, one gift becomes another gift, becomes another gift, becomes another gift. And all of a sudden, we've got hope and peace and joy and love, all kinds of going. Anybody else? Okay. I geek out. All right, so that's another one. And then we all know Heifer International, too. This was the running joke of my family. My grandma would get us half a cow every year. And every year we would decide what half that was. <laughs> and, and we would talk and go through there. So what are gifts of love that we could celebrate, have some fun in, and, and continue to share that beyond? And then there's 10,000 Villages. And this is the fair trades, um, one of the fair trade stores and possibilities. So any kind of home decor you're looking for that the thrifty penny doesn't have, you can go and get in a way um, that the people who are making it are fairly paid, and the earth that is producing it is looking, it's being looked after as well. And there's serve that does that as well. And there's some cookbooks and bean mixes and hot chocolates and coffees and chocolates and bath products and all kinds of things. Um, Tend that there's, if you go down the city um, in Fells Point, I know it's city, um, but they have one of the best 10,000 villages stores I've seen in the area. And Serve Jones, are the Jones here? Bob, where's the Serve store? You were just there. New Windsor. New Windsor. And so there's a Serve um, location in New Windsor. Next. Um, and then clothing. Um, so there's a place called Pact. Um, and it is made out of all fair trade organic cotton, um, and its labors are paid a fair, a living wage. Um, and it, so it looks through the production process from gathering the cotton, the way the cotton is grown, manufactured, and all the way through given. And so if you need some underwear, if you need some socks, if you need some pajamas, if you need some t-shirts, Pact would be a way to do it. Now, some of these are, they've been having lots of 60% off sales, but some of these companies are going to be more expensive because it's a little bit more expensive to do it in a way that cares for the environment and gives fair and living wages to workers. So go the thrifty penny and get some clothes that you would regularly spend money on, save the money there, and then when you do need to buy clothes new, put it that little extra to doing it in such a way that shares love everywhere. And then also for outerwear, Patagonia um, does fair trade fleece and also recycles all kinds of its outerwear. Again, a very expensive company, um, but do it and budget it and do it in such a way, plan for it that we can be giving gifts of love. Food, if you need chocolate, chips for the pancakes or any, or quinoa, it's the weirdest combination ever, but this company has amazing quinoa and amazing chocolate. Um, and again, fair trade all the way through with eco wrapping and all kinds of things that take care of our environment. And then the last one um, is a general store where you can go and search through all of the different um, products that are fair trade. There are lots of opportunities and lots of way to give gifts that reflect the love in which God has given us Christ. So may me all be about some love this season. And Toby, would you close us out, please? 
Toby just shared this morning of the, her philosophy of how she's doing um, her gifts. And when she says what she's doing, I want you to think Mary pondering all these moments in her heart. Um, just stand over. Uh, I just try and make a practice of giving generously. So if you get something from me and you think it's too much, please just take it because I love you. And if you're getting something from me, then I've thought of you and I think that you deserve whatever it is. Um, it means that when I go to, I don't go out very often to eat lunch or dinner, but if I go out and I leave a tip that looks way too generous, just don't worry about it. It's just how I live generously um, in my small way. If I have a way to do that, I will. And the other thing that I focus on this year is in my gift giving, rather than just saying, what do you want? I think more about what will make memories in the future. So what will impact your day? on a regular basis that makes you think either of me or just of being generous and lo loving others. So may we give loves, may we give gifts of love that share love, that share memories, that store up all of that goodness in our hearts to ponder not only Christmas Day, but through all the days to come. Let 